as he promised you, to keep his commandments, for, he, for him to set you high above all nations that he has made, in praise and in fame and in honor, and for you to be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he promised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have kept, you have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways would be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. This is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the disciples had gathered around Jesus on the mountain, he spoke to them. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. It is so essential as Christians that we always be looking um, for the call of perfection within the sacred scriptures, that um, we're not here to kind of make ourselves feel better because we're going to church and other people are skiing or something this morning. Uh, We're here to be perfected by the grace that flows from God. And it's a powerful thing to ask ourselves the questions, you know. I remember reading an article in this newspaper about this atheist girl who said, well, I'm better than my, you know, than many Christians I know, which I don't know how she makes that distinction. Um, those distinctions are often made, you know, from our own perceptions. Perceptions, You know, well, maybe I'm a vegan and that makes me better than Christians. Or I'm not sure what her, what her criterion was. But I'm sure it could be true that in some ways her desires, uh, her sacrifices are more admirable because she doesn't have anything to power them. Whereas you and I as Christians, we have the perfection, uh, perfecting love of God, his perfecting grace, his perfecting mercy available to us. And how are we exactly living that, that grace? How could someone say, well, your life is no different than anyone else's? 
And this is what Christianity uh, calls us for. Do you and I love our enemies? Do we do good to those who hurt us? Do we greet our enemies? You know, as Christians, we can do all these things because we always have that larger perspective in line. And we have the grace and power and mercy, sacramental grace of God to help us go beyond our human weaknesses. Christianity is such a call to go beyond uh, where we are, to go beyond our fears and anxieties. You know, in a certain sense, we say, well, I've heard it said so many times, well, that's just human. Okay, you're right, it is just human. But as a Christian, we're called not to be just human. We're called to implore the grace of God to transform our humanity so that you and I are heading towards the perfection that God is calling us to. None of us get to sit on our laurels and say, well, I've been baptized, I go to, I go to church, confession. Great. Those are beautiful things. But how are you utilizing, how are we utilizing those graces in our lives right now? Could anyone tell that those graces are taking an effect in our lives? We should pour forth prayer at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for Pope Emeritus Benedict, for our Bishop Joseph, for their health, intentions, and constant growth in faith, hope, and charity. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray um, for the grace to... Uh, Invite your perfection into our lives, Lord, that our lives may be truly different because we have encountered you, encountered your mercy, encountered your love. And may, through encountering your love and mercy, we spread that to those around us. For this we pray to the Lord. Um, we pray uh, for those who have removed our religious rights and freedoms for their conversion, and pray for all those who are fighting against them. Give our leaders special courage during this time to be the men of God they're called to be. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for um, all those who have the power to influence, especially through media, politics, teaching, and um, religion, that, that we may use that power to 
draw others into the great mystery of Christ, so that all may be saved and come to the fullness of the truth. For this we pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick and the dying, those who have died recently, especially Maria. God's blessing to be upon their, their family members, those who are tempted to commit suicide, those who are struggling with drug addictions, those with different infectious diseases, for God's grace and mercy to be upon them. For this we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for continued holy discernment to follow your will in this church project, Lord. For this we pray to the Lord. This Mass we pray for a special intention. For this we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, we offer up our own prayers and petitions. We pray to the Lord, Lord. We pray for all the holy souls in purgatory, and we ask them to join us. To all the saints and angels in heaven, especially St. Joseph, our Blessed Mother, St. Gabriel Placenti, to pray for more vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life and the holy matrimony, to preserve all those in their vocations and assist us in our universal call to holiness. For this we pray to the Lord. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord. May these blessed mysteries by which we are restored, O Lord, we pray, make us worthy of the gifts they bestow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Show unceasing favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine mystery, and accompany the, with salutary consolation those you have imbued with heavenly teaching through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing for which they have long strengthen your faithful, O God, so that never straying from your will, they may always rejoice in your benefits through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.